Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and I'm having a really good day today. And you can tell that because number one, I've got somebody with me in my video and number two, we're gonna talk about something new. So let's go ahead and start with who I've got with me. This is Tammy, this is my coworker. And Tammy, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself and tell folks what it is you do for Pitsco. So I am a curriculum specialist for Pitsco and I am writing Tetrix Prime curriculum. And Tim and I work together on this programming guide we're gonna to talk to you about today. So that's the second thing. That's the new thing that we're gonna talk about. That's the new Pulse Controller for Prime and the company programming guide that Tammy did to introduce that. So one of the really cool things that Pitsco always tries to do is be innovative and always forward thinking and creating new and exciting pro products. Uh, last year we introduced Prism as a programming option and, and the first proprietary a microcontroller for robotics for Tetrix. This year we're following it up with Pulse. And let's talk a little bit about some of the specific features and what this is, what makes this a little bit different from Prism. Um, first, it's specifically designed for Prime, right? Yes. Yeah. And so the great thing about Pulse is it's designed for the Prime building system. So if you have a Prime set, this is now a controller that you can use that's provided by Pitsco. And another great thing is the size. So it's really awesome. a small size that fits well with the Tetrix Prime building system. So if you can see just as a comparison, this is the this is the prism and this is the pulse. So you can see uh, we've reduced the footprint dramatically as far as what it actually takes to fit onto your robot. So this is gonna be really ideally suited for that prime robot that's typically a little bit smaller. And it's also gonna be, again, more classroom friendly because it's gonna go with that prime building system building your robots quicker, more friendly in the classroom because of the size and space it takes up. So um, along with that, we've got some specific features yeah, that and make it, it really cool. Great thing is with this, it uses the Tetrix RG Blockly software, which was designed by Pitsco. And this software allows you to do graphical programming. So it's a great introduction for students who have never done programming before. And it also has the ability to use the Arduino IDE. So you have an option to program with the graphical programming or with Arduino and you can do text-based programming. So right along with the physical building system, we can you can see right away that we really have made this even more friendly for that middle school target that Prime really fits into. So again, we, we really have kind of taken some of the things that make Prime really um, valuable in the classroom and we've designed Pulse to go right along with that. It does have uh, a full feature set though. It's not like it's got a reduced feature set. Like Prism, we have support for DC motors, We've got support for encoders. We have six servo inputs, outputs, excuse me. And then we have six digital and analog inputs for sensors. That's six total. So three analog, three digital, and also one I2C for uh, the more advanced sensors or, or potentially expansion along the way. We have an on-off button. We have, uh, as far as for programming, and then we have a power on and off because a battery goes right into this. So. This is really truly plug and play because you don't need an on off switch. You just plug your ba battery directly into this and USB port to program and you're ready to go, right? Yeah. And the battery that you use comes in your Tetrix Prime building set. And it, so it's six volt. So this is specifically designed to work within that Prime, again, that Prime building system. I've said that several times, but we really wanna make sure folks understand that. It's designed specifically to go with everything that comes with your prime building system. So it really does make that prime system truly autonomous. And it has multiple LEDs that you can also program. I forgot the LEDs. Yeah, so in fact, instead of two, Prism had two, Prime actually has three. So we have a red, a yellow, and a green LED built in that you can program um, and use as part of your, your program. And we'll actually try that in a little bit. Um, so as we're talking about that, let's talk a little bit more about the guide itself because we, we've done this really good guide. Yeah. And Tammy has a, a, an extensive background. She's a teacher or was a teacher in the classroom. So you actually had that uh, frontline experience that a lot of your teachers are, are going through. She knows what you go through. And she was an instrumental in writing uh, pretty much the whole guide. And um, let's talk a little bit about um, your focus when you wrote the guide. First off, what were you thinking about when you when you really kind of structured this as far as your target audience? Well, with this guide, we really wanted it to work for students that they can go through this guide start to finish and learn how to program. So 
if you've never done any programming before, the students can start right with this after getting the software set up and everything installed on their computers. Then they can go through five getting started activities and they build in sequence and complexity as the students go through the guide. So the getting started activities, we provide example programs for them. So they get to see the program and how it functions. We explain how the programs work, how to use the software and how to use the hardware of the Pulse controller. And then the students can actually modify those programs and make changes to them. And after they complete those getting started activities, they get to build a basic robot called the Cody Bot. And then after they build the Cody Bot, we go into more complex programs and there's 10 more activities the students will go through. That's a lot of activities, but I, I think I make sure I want to make sure I understand. So they are progressive, right? So they're going to yes. start. The idea is start from the beginning, work through, and as each time they get through each activity, it'll get a little bit, it'll build on the one before, right. and they get a little bit progressive, harder, and more. Uh, the idea of building confidence, right? Yes. Awesome. Yep. And awesome. there's extension activities for the students where you can take those activities they've done and expand on what they've done. There's real live uh, connections to where you would see this programming in the real world. And there's even connections to careers. We list careers that the students could do with that activity. So there's it provides a lot of relevance to the classroom and an easy start point for teachers and students in using Pulse. Awesome. So let's go ahead, before we get into that, let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to do these videos because uh, we're going to break this up. Tammy's uh, agreed to work with me on this, so I'm going to go ahead and cover the first uh, five getting started activities because those are the easy ones, so right up my alley. And then when we get into uh, the last uh, actual activities with CodyBot, Tammy's going to come back and we're going to help, help me work through those with you so that, again, for those people that, that like to have more of a visual experience than just uh, the programming guide, the written guide, um, we're going to go ahead and work through those, which reminds me, we need to uh, tell the folks that, um, again, when they get uh, the programming guide, it's going to be available for download, but right. when they get the, the set, uh, the programmable set, right. there's first, there's the a la carte, you can buy this by itself with just the, the pulse controller and a USB cable. You can get in a component set that would include the pulse, a USB cable, a couple of prime DC motors and some sensors, everything that you need to do the programmer's guide. Right. And then there's also then a programmable set that you can get where you would get this guide that comes with it. And the dual control set, which uh, gives you everything from the programmable set plus the RC gamepad and wireless receiver so you can do remote control. So the main thing they need to re remember that if they already have a prime set, they can just get the component set to go with that and then they'll be able to do everything in the guide. Or right. if they get the program will set, they'll have everything they need, right? Yes, and if you decide to do the guide in the classroom, we um, recommend it'll probably take about 15 hours maybe to progress through, especially if you do those extension activities with the students. So it's a great way to take the first two to three weeks to introduce students to coding. Awesome. So uh, to get started, obviously we need software. So we're gonna um, grab our computer, come back and we're gonna show you how to go ahead and get all the software and everything you need. 